Fingers crossed. Yeah, I forget when the sun goes down. Hello. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, before I start tonight, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, I'm broadcasting uh, from the lands of the Wongo people of the Eora Nation. Um, and my guest tonight is coming to us from the lands of the Wurrung, Wurundjeri people. Um, I'd like to pay respects to elders past and present um, and extend that respect to anyone watching with a connection to the oldest continuing culture and the first storytellers of this place. Sovereignty was never ceded and it always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'd also like to acknowledge that uh, tonight vigils are taking place across the country for the death of the Noongar teenager Cassius Turvey, who was just 15 years old when killed walking home from school in broad daylight. Um, this has been just one of many public examples of the ongoing colonial violence towards First Nations people in the last fortnight. Um, if, you, like me, you're a settler on these lands and you have the means, I urge you to donate to the Justice for Cassius GoFundMe, which we're going to link in the comments um, in YouTube, and uh, also to consider making a regular payment to Aboriginal-led organisations in your area. Um, my name is Rory Green. I'm a writer, I'm an editor and a digital media artist, and I'm also the facilitator of this season of Toolkits Connect Digital Storytelling. Tonight, our guest artist joining us is Mohamed Shamas. Mohamed Shamas is an artist, independent game developer, and poet based in Nam. Mohamed's work holds magical, spiritual, and mystic practices in both friction and synergy to emerging technological phenomena. This unseemly tension reconstitutes the borders of heresy and divine convolution led by the digital genie, a speculative research tool. The entanglements that emerge are framed by religious and occult studies, language, ludology, gamification, and the military entertainment complex. Muhammad's illusory workings emerge as image, sound, writing, utterance, interaction, virtual reality, art games, installation, performance, and often as hybrid forms that dance across these mediums. Muhammad's location-based VR altars are made for the healing of orientalized and otherwise marked bodies, namely uh, Cyber Tasuf, uh, which received two free play independent game festival awards in 2019. Muhammad has exhibited at Siteworks, Testing Grounds, Seventh Gallery, Trocadero Art Space, Incinerator Gallery, and Mars Gallery. Muhammad's literary work has appeared in uh, Co, The Lifted Brow, Liminal Magazine, Cordite Poetry Review, and Running Dog. Now, what is Toolkits? Uh, what is Toolkits Connect? Toolkits Connect is a 12-week uh, program for writers aged 30 and under to develop their skills in a unique and exciting online environment. Toolkits is run by Express Media. Um, Express has been around for over 30 years, developing, supporting, and promoting young writers through workshops that develop skills, through opportunities for constructive feedback and publication, like VoiceWorks Magazine. Uh, quick, quick promo here on my desk. Uh, and through awards and programs that recognize excellence. Toolkits Connect is generously supported by Australian Poetry and the Copyright Cultural Fund. This session is going to be available on YouTube as a resource uh, ongoing and will be captioned in the coming days. If you'd like to ask any questions uh, for to Muhammad or myself tonight, you can do so on our new online event platform, the Express Media Zone, uh, on Twitter using the hashtag EMToolkits or via the live chat section on YouTube. We'd really love questions and we're going to answer a bunch uh, towards the end of our uh, session tonight. So please pop them in the chat and we will get round to them. Um, in this Toolkits live session, we're going to be talking about how to craft stories across multimedia forms. Um, how can storytellers make the most of combining text, image, and sound, uh, and other amazing digital forms? And uh, how do these elements speak to each other across uh, digital mediums? Uh, that's my that's my spiel over. Um, hello, Mohammed. It's lovely to have you. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Hey, Rory, it's lovely to be here. Um, tell, I think a good place to start would be kind of a bit of an introduction to your creative practice and um, sort of 
the I guess particularly in terms of starting out like did you start out working in a particular form or from a particular kind of um creative tradition mm. yeah so this is a really great question and I don't often get to um reveal the very very beginning beginnings of my artistic practice um <laughs> But yeah, I started out doing illustration in a very like traditional sense, a lot of figurative representation. Um, I thought I would be a character artist for video games. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was really interested in things like painting and drawing and um, yeah, that sort of, uh, in the nicest way, a naive understanding of uh, being a game designer, making cool characters and that sort of thing. That's really where I was at, um, right at right at the beginning. And I had been, I've been drawing and doing art since, um, since I was really, really young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's obviously very different from what I do now. <laughs> yeah. Was there a, um, talk us through some of the steps from, from sort of character design and illustration to the, the work that you're doing now? I mean, mm. um, what stands out for me is that you, you were talking about these like visual mediums, but now your work crosses textual forms and incorporates sound and, um, like, uh, when did you start like experimenting with these other, other forms? Mm, yeah. Um, so I guess what contextualizes or um, maybe annexes all of the practices I do now, um, or all of the mediums that I venture into, is uh, probably my experience studying game design <laughs> at university. So I was uh, really geared towards that track. And then when I actually was doing uni, um, I feel like that was where everything started to branch out. Uh, in my second year of uni, there was a assignment where we had to make a game on our own, which I was like very, I was really dreading it. <laughs> I was like, oh no, uh, I was relying on group work. Uh, like now I don't know like what I'm going to do. Um, but I think that is probably when I really started to make some interesting stuff. Um, yeah, and, and when I started to question if, um, you know, a game or a poem or a story needed to stay within the bounds of um, how those forms have been presented historically. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did you like, um, w was there something that kind of spurred you in terms of thinking about like, um, like I'm interested in your poetry as well as like a big part of, of your, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of your work. Um, what, what am I trying to say? Were you like, um, what, what spurred that like experimentation with poetry um, in particular mm. as a kind of um, narrative form within, you know, ag against or alongside your like visual work? Yeah, yeah, that's a really great question. I guess, um, <laughs> I guess I just had, <laughs> I guess I've just always had like really creative things going on in my in my head and in my heart <laughs> um and yeah for the longest time I was like oh like my expression of choice is you know visual and through the visual arts um and I never really like thought much of having a, a creative um writing practice well you know like a a, a poetry practice um I never really thought I would be doing it <laughs> um yeah but I think like I don't know yeah I might have to ask like my primary school teachers but I feel like I just always felt really comfortable in writing and never really grew aware of that until um until my honors year um 
in 2018, um, I feel like that's really where things like, you know, the middle of my degree is when things started like forming, but then in my honours degree, uh, just the whole of 2018, a uh, complete like paradigm shift. Uh, yeah, I think I really set the grounds of like everything that I've been doing ever since in that year. Um, so in an honours year, you, you're, you know, like reading and writing quite a bit and it's very intense, very compressed. Um, and I think I produced a lot of like excess, uh, like, or the, the need to express creative energy in, in excess. And I was like, where the hell do I put that? <laughs> it's not, um, it didn't feel like quick enough to uh, make a game about it or make some visual art about it. Um, so I just started writing and yeah, I forget who first sort of like pointed out that my writing was quite like poetic, but um, yeah, I really forget who or like what the moment was where I was like, oh, maybe I could like try some poetry, but like it happened in that year for sure. Um, and then I was like, hey, okay, like let's, <laughs> let's try this and um so often the poetry really just made sense of a lot of the um concepts and themes that i was trying to hold together the poetry sort of like uh encircled them in a really uh in a way where i just had a lot of clarity in the space of both writing and like looking back and reading um that sort of writing yeah <laughs> and it's, it's like uh, you're i really relate to that what you said about kind of the intensity of honors and that um mm. period of just kind of um i don't know soaking up so many new ideas and then kind of getting to a point sort of um during that process where you have to kind of like you've kind of got to like wring it out over yourself or you're like I, I don't know. I felt like I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, um, I gotta get this out of my head and and mm -hmm. and into, um, and the idea of like, um, excess or like kind of, um, uh, it, you know, having an outlet that that maybe spans across like multiple projects or kind of creative ideas. Did you with your um, uh what was the kind of aftermath of your honors year like? Did you like um, want to leave behind a lot of what you had done in that like intense period? Or did you, was it like really like energizing to like, did you like take what you did from that and like immediately start um, extending it in other work? Mm, um, it was very much the latter. Um, honestly, I still think about the, <laughs> entanglements I got into during my honours year, um, I, I still feel like I'm trying to answer my my research question. Um, I couldn't tell you what, what the research question is, uh, but um, yeah, I feel like it's changing every time. It's like a formless sort of um, inquiry that I'm making. Um, but no, for sure, I've, I've definitely been continuing down that line and really uh, uh expanding expanding the the seeds that i planted you know watching them blossom and then looking in horror or in amazement you know <laughs> um i uh, i'd like to take that thought about um uh ex sort of having like an inquiry that that isn't necessarily um, explicit or like put into language, but just kind of imbues, you know, mm -hmm. the sort of um, work that you approach. Um, uh, I feel like it ties in really well to this idea of, and we were talking to, we spoke about this um, online before, the kind of interplay between like the idea and the material or like the concept and the form and, um, I'm really interested in how this kind of manifests in your work because you you um, work across so many different forms and have these works that that um, 
you know, combine mediums in in what to me feel like really innovative ways. Um, but then there's also, um, you know, I, I can see a kind of conceptual thread around um, uh, mysticism and technology um, mm. in in a lot of your work. Like, do you, does has that does that line of inquiry shape like all of your work and kind of guide you to work in specific forms or like um, have there been op- a moments where sort of experimenting with forms or tools have given you like new ideas? Um, yeah. What's that, what's that relationship like between the kind of ideas and, and materials in your work? Yeah. Great question. Um, I, I really want to answer like every little bit of this. So sure. we, we got time. <laughs> time. <Yeah. laughs> uh, please feel free to, uh, rehash the question. Yes. Probably like go on a tangent <laughs> and, then, and then forget the rest of the question. But I'm like, mm, let me chew on this. I'm so into it. Delicious. Um, <laughs> um, yes. So I'd, I'd say that like, I'd say that what really brings everything together is that sort of formless, perpetually shifting inquiry. It's like a, what is this? And what is that? And what is the thingness of the thing? <laughs> um, and I think, I think like, I think it's, it's quite aligned that sort of like questioning that happens is quite aligned to what I understand as the mystic path or like um, just mysticism in general, like what I understand of it. Um, it's, it's definitely like, uh, it, it would be a reduction maybe, maybe a reduction or it's like, it's not quite adequate to say that it's simply a like philosophical inquiry. It definitely feels like a mystical one in the sense that it's like, what are the invisible orchestrations surrounding the events and actions that are taking place around me? And <laughs> what are the like, you know, what conspires in my, for my benefit and what conspires against it, maybe? <laughs> or, um, yeah, like getting lost in those sort of speculations and curiosities in a sort of like momentous, um, you know, either inspired or beguiled way. Um, mm. Maybe finding pleasure in confusion, um, like that's that's really what it is <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> um, Are there like uh, certain mm. like works that you might want to like um, that you'd point to as like um, like you really like you're really happy with in terms of you got you got at this kind of exploration of these sort of um, invisible forces. Mm, not yet. Not like, yet. Well, <laughs> I don't know if there's one, but I, I would say actually my my honors uh, project. So I did like exegesis and creative work. Um, my my honors creative work, Cyber to Sawolf, was really close. I reckon. I think I think it like like it's still like not like there. So I'm like, I don't know actually, <laughs> but like, I feel like it's the one where I felt most um, aligned and embodied in that um, curiosity and momentum while also being able to sort of like adequately push the energy into the work, not necessarily imbue the work with that curiosity <laughs> it's sort of just like pushing the energy towards it and seeing what happens um and i think in that way like the other part of your question is that like a lot of my work really starts from like a heart space so it's definitely like creative um exploration or, like wanting to express something a feeling sentiment um you know a moment that i had and what it meant to me and then like reflecting on putting those things into these uh you know tools that like 
um, appear all around us, um, you know, like, and and then uh, and then that's where the, like the material um, exploration sort of comes into it. It's like now that I have this expression, you know, somewhat formed uh, in this medium, like, what is that actually? Like, what, what, what is that saying to me? Like, what, what does that feel like? And how can I, um, you know, like, finely tune and adjust and augment or expand or enhance or reduce um, the, the, the sort of um, <laughs> chaos that, that that has created? <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love those verbs that you had, expand, augment reduce mm. like um uh it it's often i don't know like i feel like um it's hard to talk about or i find it hard to talk about that kind of like um exploration of an idea within a digital medium at uh, that that um i don't know that process of 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 molding something of um uh, having expressing an idea in one form and then um, sort of tinkering with it and seeing it like you know slowly either trans like build towards the kind of original like you know the vision that I've had for it at the beginning or or have those moments which I think I like more so where I um, realize I kind of have to like completely flip it upside down you know um, it, it, that find that that expression, you know, um, needs to be done in a completely different form or needs to be done in a completely different way to how I'd kind of been envisioning it. That can only really happen once you're like at the level of like making, you know, where you're, where you, you've got something sort of tangible or clickable <laughs> in this, in this sense. Um, uh, that's really cool. Um, I, I want to kind of come back to, um, the idea of the like forms that you've sort of, um, um, adopted or, or sort of the ones you've grown up with and also those that you've kind of picked up through your studies and, and have developed since, um, and particularly like you've talked about your kind of, um, uh, you know, like illustration and visual art being your kind of cornerstone growing up and then also having a really intuitive relationship to writing. Um, mm -hmm. What, uh, are there particular f media that you have been, you, that you've worked with over the past few years that, that um, wasn't intuitive, was, was mm -hmm. like a major challenge and like how, what was the process like of like, what's the process like for you of like trying a form or a meet, like a, a tool or whatever that you're not familiar with and, and kind mm. of integrating it into your kind of um, sort of uh, creative practice? Yeah. Oh, great question. Um, I guess like it, it's making me think like, Perhaps my entire <laughs> career path and perhaps trajectory is simply me having big, like, like a big idea or like thinking something would be really cool and then like clashing with all of the barriers that come up and then just like breaking into a million like shimmering pieces and like that, whoop, that, that sort of like uh loose like assemblage is actually what becomes my practice i sort of like sweep up the pieces and i'm just like here this is the thing that i have <laughs> um i say this because <laughs> um i think the medium i struggle with the most is the medium that i studied like to learn <laughs> um so uh games or just um using game engines is actually like still to this day like really 
challenging, sometimes really nauseating. Like sometimes I'm like, I don't want to open Unity today. <laughs> I don't ever want to open Unity again. <laughs> um, and, and not to say that Unity is the only game engine or the only piece of software I use, um, but like that's probably the one uh, that I use most for things that are like uh, in a game context in their functionality. Um, it's it's so the software I've used the most for works of mine that are interactive or like semi-functional through logic. Um, but yeah, I'd say like, yeah, it's so weird. Uh, I just have a very interesting relationship with um, working with game engines and uh, coding and that sort of uh, business. It, I think, I think what really helps me, and I'm not sure if this is really the question. I'm not really sure if I'm answering the question in saying this, um, but something that really helps me to feel comfortable <laughs> or like something that has helped me break through some of those like technical, um, intimidations <laughs> is literally like making it poetic or enchanting it in my own sort of like subjective way, like sort of like creating a mythology about me being like just, you know, pressing buttons, uh, hacking away at this like thing that feels so uh, <laughs> challenging or impossible. And that being said, I've definitely broken through a lot of the uh, more like, um, what am I trying to say? I definitely can code, um, but it does take me some time to readjust. And I think that's sort of a, I think I can allow myself that sort of space and grace because I do shift between so many modalities. Um, but yeah, I think, I think really like poeticizing the actual um, act of working in the medium <laughs> has, has helped me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds like uh, is that it. It sounds to me what you're describing is is very tied up with um, is as much tied up with like the process of being the process of making the process of of um, um, working with a particular material as the kind of um, output or the kind of experience of an audience of the final product like that that poeticization that poeticizing of what you're kind of working on is that like do you do you mean that in a sense for yourself in the process of making or in sort of how you then present what you make to to others mm. oh yeah like definitely in the process and i think um actually i think it's really um yeah it's hard to it's hard to stick to one answer with that question because i guess the process of making and my sort of poeticization of that does end up in the way that I present or the outcome that I have because I guess I'm I'm quite fond of like revealing infrastructures or finding beauty in the sort of like uh <laughs> like aesthetics of like techie things um it feels yeah it feels like it feels like that's where the material uh, material explora exploration and creative exploration sort of like um, blend into each other a bit for me. Um, yeah, yeah. Is that is that clear? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, as, clear as, I, <laughs> as clear as it can be. I mean, um, I guess this kind of ties in well with what I wanted to ask next around the kind of. I guess, and we've touched on it a bit, some of the kind of barriers and challenges around working across like multiple media forms. Mm -hmm. um, I I was looking through, you know, um, looking at, at, at a handful of your works, which just have, you know, um, that blend and sort of transform sort of, um, uh 
I feel like, um, do you know those, like, you know that, like, Pokemon mashup generator where you have, like, the series, this is, like, completely off, sort of off topic. I'll get back to it. But, you know, where you, there's, like, a website and you can, like, get, like, a Psyduck and an Onix and then it shows what the sprite would look like, those combined. What? And you're sort of, like... <laughs> There's so often I see the like I like refresh like a randomized refresh and I see something I'm like, like, yeah, of course that makes perfect sense. You know, like I I wouldn't have dreamed I wouldn't have dreamed seeing the two comp like separate parts that mm-hmm. then when combined would 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 make sense or be comprehensible to me in that way. Um, mm-hmm. And I think about your work like. Um, uh like cyber task wolf the the that has this performance element along with this vr element and um uh like recede in uh in sanctuary uh liminal mag's fantastic uh online issue which has the kind of generative poetry alongside the kind of um sort of visual frame of like a loading screen like all of these things i'm like like yeah the there is a um uh, a really articulate kind of composition of these different elements here that, you know, um, is really powerful. I guess what I'm kind of interested in hearing about is like, what, when has that not worked for you? Like, when, like, is that something that, is that something that just like happens straight away or do you mm. find yourself, like, do you have a kind of, cutting room floor of of sort of material mashups what 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 is that kind of experience of taking sort of you know um potentially just you know ostensibly disparate forms or mediums and kind of um um blending them together in the way that you do Yeah. Just um, quickly, while uh, while you're thinking on that, I just want to also plug uh, again the questions that you can ask in the Express Media Zone uh, on Twitter, hashtag EM Toolkits, or in YouTube. Um, yeah. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> back to you, Mohammed. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> I'm f- I'm fine with more time to think. Um, uh, I I really love this question. I'm like, oh shit! How do I answer this? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll give it a, my best shot. I I reckon like, I reckon I don't really have a, a cutting room. Like, I don't really. Yeah, I don't know how much I've cut. Like, there's definitely things in more sort of like traditional approaches mm-hmm. to things like. Um, games that I'm like okay like I feel like I I have not given this part adequate time so I will just not put it in this you know version <laughs> of the game um but yeah there's uh and and that being said I'm thinking of my game my heart is your heart um which is sort of like a heavily like narrative based experience walking simulator thing that you can play only on pc sorry mac users <laughs> um yeah i I've, i i think of like yeah i've definitely cut a lot of the like story of that world i didn't get enough time yet mm-hmm. to like represent it the way that i wanted so i cut a lot of it but you know these these experimental forms that i do like virtual reality installations um yeah they, they feel quite ir- iterative because they're such sort of like infantile forms that i'm like maybe all of this wacky stuff will just work and then <laughs> whatever doesn't feel like it's working i'll um improve for next time or or, or cut or take away um, that being said, I'm I'm not sort of like chucking out all of my like <laughs> crud and like half baked ideas. I mean, like I sort of do do that, <laughs> but like um, there's definitely a lot of uh, consideration that goes into to something 
um, as spatial as a virtual reality installation. Um, yeah, I, I definitely have uh, things that I, I think critically about and I'm like, mm, this, this part's not going to work. And uh, when someone puts on a virtual reality device, I know that I really want this sort of like visual anchor to be the first thing they see. And I know that I want it to feel this way. And I, um, yeah, like I think a lot of the time what I'm changing right to the last minute, which might be what constitutes an, a, a more adequate answer to this question, is things like the speed at which things move in, in virtual works. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes it's the color of like, usually like background elements, like keeping everything really harmonious in terms of color. <laughs> and also uh, I use like just animated shaders, like really simple ones. And like when they move and they're applied to a skybox in VR, if it's moving too quickly, you're going to feel like you're rising or like if they move too quickly the other way, you're going to feel like you're falling. And I'm like, okay, like I know that I need to fine tune this to make sure that, you know, people can like feel like they're on solid ground in VR. Um, yeah, I know that that last bit was quite particular. Um, I'm not sure if I'm answering the question adequately. Please. No, it's me. good. I, I, um, <laughs> Uh, it's really interesting to hear about like those particularities in terms of what you're what you're changing in the late stages of your of kind of you know or just before work is going live or being published or in whatever. Um, and uh, it's really interesting to hear you say um, about what you when you spoke about what the kind of first visual anchor is and saying I want I want my audience to feel this way um, mm. that to me sounds um like a really um i don't know really interesting and important kind of conversation to have around kind of i, I guess working across many different media um i think a lot about work where um the sort of I, I can i can work on maybe if it's like multimedia work where there's work with multiple elements i can work on one element and then I can work on another and then I put them together and that, you know, they, um, the conversation that those have with one another, the kind of harmony of them is not really what I expected. And that's only after they kind of get combined that I then need to, I go, oh, okay, I need to go kind of under the hood of this side. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like, yeah, um, very similar to kind of your process at, particularly with VR, which I imagine, you know, you're dealing with visuals, sound, space, proprioception. Mm -hmm. um, uh, have you, uh, had, are there any kind of notable experiences you'd like to share about like um, the reception of your work? Because I guess VR, I'm, I'm just quite, you know, I think it's quite interesting as a, um, as a technology that isn't necessarily like ubiquitous, you know, like not everybody has a VR headset. So a lot of kind of these experiences are happening in gallery spaces and mm -hmm. in kind of public spaces where you, you know, get to see people interact with your work in a way that like maybe other game makers who are working in, you know, um, you know, distributing stuff on itch or steam won't get to see. Mm -hmm. um, have there been any kind of like, yeah, I don't know, really good, really weird <laughs> experiences for you kind of seeing how people engage with emerging forms that they don't necessarily have the kind of, um, what's the word? It's like the instinct for interacting with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, brilliant question. Yeah. People really like, um, a lot of the time they don't know how to approach it. That's what I find. They're just like, oh, like, how does this work? Like, is, like what's in there and what am I going to see? And I'm like, mm, yeah, like, let me show you. It's not, I promise it's not that scary. Um, or maybe it is, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think I think something that, that jumped out at me, I was just like, 
what are the most like memorable responses to my work and as like as like people who are familiar with my work might um yeah might think might like relate to the work in this way um the first thing that i think of when i'm like what stands out as a response is this is so trippy <laughs> um so and i know that sounds like sort of like sort of like very simple um but but i think that there's something very very important in that sort of like sentiment or expression in response to the work it's like this feels elevated from regular experience i feel like my state of consciousness is being altered in one way or another it feels like there needs to be you know a uh, uh, some some attunement to the fact that a transgression is being made at least temporarily um or that like some sort of uh uh you know like experience of elevation is about to happen or, or expansion you know like um yeah like sensations appearing that don't normally appear and i think like that's precisely why uh, for the nature of my work with all the themes included and all the, the sort of like uh, considerations I make, I really don't want someone to just be having the experience at home. I think I, it might just be like <laughs> me wanting control over how they experience it or something. Um, but I think like, I, I think it's important to put some ceremony around it it's important to allow it to be an experience that is like sensual as well as like not sen uh, sensual not just ocular mm. um because vr is really like an embodied embodied medium and experience um and i think like putting space around it that that there's a conscious sort of curation of, of spatial elements um, that that really feels right for virtual reality works. And, um, you know, I didn't actually, uh, you know, the first virtual reality work I made, Cyber to Cyber, for Honest, um, I made that at home on my computer, thinking about Sufism and God and <laughs> spirituality. Um, and then, you know, it was like after the fact that I actually thought about how do I situate this in a space and what ceremony is required to um, uh, induct someone into this virtual space I've created. Um, I'm starting to think I lost essence of the question as I went. That's through. okay. I mean, I, I you, you, um, that last part really speaks to, um, question I realized we kind of skipped over about you know your sort of approach to creative experimentation how it's evolved over time and it's really interesting to hear um that those additional considerations around kind of what constitute the the um like what is the VR work you know and it's not just this headset but and what what appears before the audience in in you know front of their eyes but also the space that they're in when they put this headset on and what they can what they can hear and and um smell and and what they can that 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 sense of um that sense of space that it, mm -hmm. you know it that is um kind of um you know, one of those, one of those additional senses, additional subtle senses. It's like an amalgam of, you know, what you can hear and what you can feel under your feet. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of, um, there's a couple of questions in the chat that I'm keen to um, get to before we wrap up for yeah. this evening. But um, there's one last question I had that I really wanted to ask you, which was around, I guess, um, I, what advice would you have for um, sort of emerging writers and artists who get into digital storytelling, people who are artists who are maybe picking up forms that are unfamiliar to them, um, you know, 
art, visual artists working with text or writers working with sound or, you know, yeah. or like what, what advice would you have for people picking up new media forms and integrating that into their work? Yeah. Um, don't be afraid. Like, don't fear. You're, you have, you're allowed to give yourself the permission to do something completely wild and if it fails then it fails um but i think like if you feel really good about something and when you like see the work in its drafted form and you're just like i see the potential in this i really want to bring these two things together um just do it find the find the like cool folks who will like give you an opportunity to do something wild i've been really really privileged and blessed um to come across people who are just like hmm like i don't know what you're talking about but it sounds interesting give it a shot um and just like having the opportunity to like spit that that spit that out of myself <laughs> um you know recede was sort of even like a, I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then I'm like, oh, what if I did this? And then they're like, oh my God, yeah, do it. And I'm like, fuck yeah. And yeah, that, <laughs> that's sort of how that happened. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, just have fun with it, I reckon. Like, I don't know how like flippant that sort of advice is, like, just have fun. Um, but like, yeah, like it's, it's really like at the end of the day, like what is your art form? doing for you and and how can you make that feel even more exciting by um you know like what what are you doing by grabbing this new medium and and the one thing that i would suggest is to avoid at all costs the novelty of the medium you know like mm -hmm. don't make it vr just because it can be vr um really ask yourself why why is it vr how does the essence of the work change if it's you know vr or if it's a poem or if it's um a, a video that has writing uh, yeah, as its primary focus um uh you know what what are the what is the best arrangement of mediums to come together um yeah that's that serve the contention of the work yeah 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 <laughs> I love that. Um, I don't think, you know, have fun is a, is a flippant piece of advice. I think like, you know, uh, it, uh, I think if it's construed as flippant, it's like, it's like a very, um, surface level understanding of what like fun is, especially in relation to making art. I think there is something really, um, uh, very like deep and vital to to play and joy in the the creative process and the act of making that that I don't know mm -hmm. can't imagine doing anything creative without having that in some form you know even if even if the 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 subject matter that I'm kind of making work about is like very somber or you know is an expression of grief or you know that 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 there is still um there is some element like i mean like i think you know processing hard emotions you know mm -hmm. is is um i don't know in creative context has like an element of play in it always you know even yeah. if it doesn't necessarily manifest like uh, uh, at like a super conscious level while you're creating. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking. I so I'm looking at some of these some of these questions, and mm. um, there's one here that I feel like we maybe mostly answered, but I maybe maybe um, you might want to add a bit to it, which is about this idea of um, from pretty and pretentious. Um, you touched on it a bit before, but how do you overcome that overwhelming feeling of so many tools, so little time when initially writing a piece that you want to feel as honest and good? Um, uh, is, I, I think I can see a lot of, you know, that kind of responded to in what we just spoke about around, you know, um, have fun, 
give yourself kind of permission to do this and 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 not to kind of overthink it but is there anything else you'd like to add Mohammed? Mm -hmm. so many tools so little time how do i overcome i feel like <laughs> i'm like adding myself as a <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the word. I'm. I'm just gonna give it a shot. I. I reckon. I. <laughs> I reckon. I almost like thrive <laughs> in the overwhelmingness of it all. I feel like I'm being like a really bad. Like I'm not trying to be an advocate for like crunch or just like you know, you know, being so stressed to the point that it's uncomfortable. Um, definitely not. Like your health is most important. Like always remember that but I think like the overwhelmingness of it all almost can feel like not in every circumstance but I feel like where I've really been able to push through best it almost carries the the um the essence of the work it's like I I really want to bring this into the world I'm so excited to bring this into the world like that creative energy in like sort of like fuses with the overwhelm and like i don't know <laughs> i wish i could just say like yeah i just find the power to do it but like it's not like that obviously um i i think i think just you know like scoping like in the most like you know to bring it back down to earth like i think scoping is really like okay i can't do that I really wanted to do this, but I, but I can't do it. Um, what is the weakest thing here? That's like, what doesn't serve the concept here? Like what's not serving what I've actually got? Uh, what What's, okay, yeah, like what do I actually have here? And then what can I do to enhance it? Where can my energy be best spent to like, uh, you know, uh, tick those things off, like draw those things to a close? Um, and yeah, like, you know, maybe save, saving saving the more wild things for next time. I feel like there was a question earlier that I now have another answer to. In yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I hope that was a a bit of um, clarity, uh, pretty and pretentious. Um, I like uh, what you uh, were just saying about, like, what can I focus my, like, you know, what do I actually have and how do I kind of like focus my energy and my attention and my kind of capabilities? Um, Cause I, I don't know if you have this experience in your, your practice, particularly in terms of VR. Um, mm. But for me, like in a lot of the like generative poetry stuff that I do, it's kind of wild how, <laughs> like if you look at the code base for each work, like it, it's seventy percent the same every time. Like and and it's like adding one tiny thing in a slightly different direction to what I already have learned. So I'm never like mm, I'm never spending that long stuck in like learning land rather than doing land because like yeah. otherwise it doesn't. If I don't have something that I can show myself for what I've been learning about, um, I just get like kind of demotivated. I have mm. to kind of like, okay, I've learned this new technique, I've learned this new function or whatever, and now I'm gonna like try and incorporate that into a work. And um, you know, mm. the thing that I really, the, the big thing that I wanna do that maybe has like lots of elements I don't know, like I will, I will get there through these other projects. Mm. Um, in VR, like how much of your VR works have kind of like, like, I don't know, like how much have you um, like developed above the previous work or like particular techniques or even like material from the earlier works kind of being remixed or, um, you know, reconstituted in different ways in later stuff? Mm. Does that happen to you? Yeah, you know, um, this is a very interesting question, especially for VR, because there is so much, uh, 
let me restart that sentence. This is very interesting for VR because the development kits change so frequently, like at least for the last few years, they've changed really frequently. So there is always an amount of relearning that I have to do. Um, some of that might just be like my capacity to retain <laughs> the, the information, um, but the software development kits do actually change. Um, I think like, yeah, I think, I think you're right. There's like this sort of crux of like, okay, so this is how it will be controlled. And this is what a player can expect to do. Um, this is what, uh, this is what would happen if, uh, so-and-so whatever. And, and for VR works, that's usually like drawing a, a line and then like whatever hits that line, um, you know, something happens once that line meets with another object. Um, that's like a very basic sort of like, yeah, ray casting setup. Um, that's, that's really, that's appeared in pretty much every single VR work I've done. Um, I think like, I think I really want to say that I have this like amount of time to like do thing, like the doing rather than the learning. But like, you know, a, a lot of the time when I wanna try something new, I, I am spending a considerable amount of time learning how to do that. I would say, however, that recede is actually, is actually probably one of the first <laughs> works where I literally was just like, ah, I know how to do all of what I want to do, I'm just going to construct it and focus on like the essence and the feeling. Um, yeah. Well, Is it's that... reassuring, I think for, I'm sure it's reassuring for listeners that, that, um, you know, that, that for most of your work, there is a period of like, I want to do something, but I don't <laughs> exactly know how to get it done. Um, yeah. that, that, um, you know, that you did get done in the end, you know, that's, that's really reassuring, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we're, we're running really close to the hour. I'm, I'm just conscious. There's like, I'm, I'm thinking about um, this last question here about how much do you let people, family, friends, etc., in when crafting a work? Um, do you feel game to give a, give a brief response to that or like. Absolutely. <laughs> um, as some of you might know, Lara Charm is my sister. She is also an artist and, you know, very, very different practice, but, um, we are sort of each other's like creative advisors towards the end of a project. Um, in particular, I'm very precious when the work is like, like gestating, <laughs> but when I'm like, you know, about to like launch it or about to draw, draw it to a close or even just after it's done, I'm just like, Lara, what do you think of it? Tell me. <laughs> um, and then my parents, I really value my parents' opinion. <laughs> I feel like every, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> the, there's a whole other talk there, you know, the, 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 um, the opinion of my parents is important, unfortunately. Um, uh, my mother has had a very beautiful, incredible, like it literally ugh, to this day, to this day, it, it like has changed me. She was playing Cyber to Sir Wolf and there's a room where um, the names of God appear yeah, like all around. And she was just so enamored by it. And she was like pointing to them and reading them. It, it felt like, and, and that's what she recounted that she was having this like sort of spiritual, spiritually elevated experience. And I was just like, this is why I made the work, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, this this is why is wow. Yeah. What an so amazing that, experience. That sort of, yeah, that sort of stuff really like, it's so valuable to me. And it's definitely definitely shaped um what i'm continuing to do with vr so yeah thanks i love mom. that <laughs> um it sounds like a great 
point to maybe wrap things up for tonight. Um, thanks so much to the audience for leaving your questions and, and engaging with, with us tonight. Um, thanks, Mohammed, for joining me. Um, where can people find your work? Um, on Instagram, Muhammad Tramis underscore. Um, that is where I do almost everything related to my practice currently. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so just a reminder to everyone that this session is going to be available on YouTube in the coming days as a, as a evergreen resource and uh, it'll be captioned if you'd like to revisit any of tonight's conversation. Um, thank you so much for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and your week and uh, yeah. Bye all. Thanks everyone. Bye.